Well, that's nasty. There it goes. Got about 30 pounds of preload on the pinion bearing. A grizzly locker from Yukon so we can make 11s. Don't drink in prime. Uh, I got a mediocre pattern. I was able to rebuild that one with a grease gun. Can you swap copper directly for meth or do you have to turn it into money first? Well, sick week has come and gone. The service truck didn't make it, but that's all right. I took the excursion, rode around, hung out with some cool folks and had a good time. We'll be prepared next year. It's okay. So let's talk about where we're at. I want to go ahead and get the service truck in the condition that I wanted it in for sick week so I can actually enjoy the truck and have a good time. I haven't worked on it in about five weeks. Um, it fired right off. I backed it up and uh, made a little room to work here. But uh, here's, here's the main issue, okay? There's not enough space between the carburetor and the hood to fit an air cleaner. So here's my plan. And don't hate me for what I'm about to tell you. I gotta put a one inch body lift on the cab and new mounts. And that'll actually work out okay for us because that'll make the bottom of the cab line up better with the bottom of the bed. So that's a good thing. It'll give us an extra inch between the motor and the hood. Also a good thing. So you're probably thinking, well, the truck's gonna be high in the front and that's, that's probably true. It's actually sitting a little bit high right now. So I bought a two inch drop spring for the front. So if you take the one inch body lift, with a new body mount, that'll probably raise us up an inch and a quarter in the front. A two inch drop spring should bring us down to make us level or a little bit low in the front. So that should even things out. So that's my plan. A lot of headache to fit a blower under a hood without cutting it. All right, so here's our parts. I've got a one inch aluminum body lift kit and I've got a fresh body mount kit from Energy Suspension. Just black bushings for the cab. So here's the plan. We're gonna loosen all the cab and front end body mount bolts pretty far. I'm gonna take the passenger side out completely, jack the truck up, put in the new body mounts and lift spacers, put the new bolts in, go to the driver's side, take the body mount bolts out completely, jack it up, put the new spacers and mounts in, put the new hardware in, square it up, tighten everything down, and then we can move on to the coil springs or the hood or whatever I feel like next. Here, but just put a body lift on the cab one inch the truck's got a little bit of a one degree a little bit of a one degree exactly a one degree rake upwards in the front um, we want to have it level or rake down just slightly so we got some two inch coil drop springs for the front from western chassis i've already got that one installed um working on the other side right now. And uh, maybe that'll bring us down an inch, inch and a half. I don't expect to get a full two inch drop out of it because the old springs are 50 years old. So they're probably already sagging a little bit. So if we get a little bit of drop out of it, we can get the front end down to level or front end down, that would be great. And if not, we might have to look at some drop spindles. It is what it is. All right, we're on the driver's side. Uh, pretty straightforward process for putting in these drop springs. What we're really trying to do here is allow the lower control arm to drop as far as possible to get that old spring out and the new spring in. And to do that, you're gonna to wanna to remove the lower shock bolt. You're gonna to wanna to remove this bracket from the upper control arm that holds the brake line. And you're gonna to wanna to remove the two bolts that hold the sway bar bushing to the lower control arm. All right, here's your safety third message. That coil spring is obviously under tension right now. You're gonna to wanna to put a floor jack under the lower control arm uh, to control where you have it positioned, okay? The upper ball joint castle nut, you wanna leave a few threads engaged while you're banging on this thing to get it to disconnect. That way when the upper control arm ball joint breaks loose from the spindle, it doesn't fly up through the fender well and your lower control arm doesn't shoot through the floor and the shock hits you in the teeth. My mom spent a lot of, a lot of money on teeth when I was a teenager, so I try, to, I try to keep all of them. As previously stated, Floor jack under lower control arm. Upper ball joint, castle nut, loose, but not completely off. There it goes, just like that. All right, now just take the castle nut the rest of the way off, lower the floor jack, yank the spring out. I don't know if you can tell, but my drop springs actually raised the front an inch, so that, that sucks. So I'm waiting on drop spindles. While I'm waiting on those to get here, I can replace this windshield, it's got a it's got a small crack like right here. Well, as you can see, I've got the new windshield in. Yeah, it's got a big crack in it. See this here tool? It's supposed to help you install the windshield. 
you stick it in between the weather stripping and the windshield and pull it up and it kind of rolls the weather stripping over unless you twist it just wrong and then it cracks your windshield and well that's a $300 mistake so pay him a stupid tax on that one that being said we got to push forward and get ready for our hot rod power tour still got the uh braking oil in the truck it's got about 50 miles on it so we're going to drain that we're out send the braking oil off and have it analyzed and we'll probably open up the oil filter i kind of kind of would like to see what's inside of an oil filter from the initial startup maybe there's some metal in there maybe there isn't i don't know it's better if you take the o-ring off dummy That's nasty. All right, let's cut these pleats off and open them up. It's a Wix, in case you're wondering. A lot more black in the valley of the pleats than there is metal in the rest of the filter. If I had to make a scientific guess, I'd say that's probably the black coating on the cam lobes. Not bad for a 50 year old small block with used pistons and a JB welded main cap. So there's the same truck that didn't make it to sick week. I waited till the last minute and now we're going to try to make it to hot rod power tour. Procrastination is my superpower. So here's the deal. The rear end's out of the truck. It's because it's in my garage. I've already got it broken down and cleaned up. It's a 14 bolt with a 373 gear and drum brakes because 1970s. Uh, I got the carrier and the pinion up here on the bench so we can work on those. What we're doing is we're gonna switch to a 321 gear from a 373. So now we can cruise at 60 instead of 70. So that means we can get six mile per gallon instead of five and that's always good. We've also got a grizzly locker from Yukon so we can make 11s or hot snakes instead of ones. Two's better. Anyway, I gotta get those broken down. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit of a cheater. I've got a bearing puller from Yukon gear and axle and it's not cheap. That's like a $350 tool. It's about the fourth axle I've used it on. And I'll say this, I've done axles without it and I've done axles with it. Even if you just do one axle, I promise you won't regret the money you spent on the tool. I'm going to get these broken down and the parts changed out. I'm probably going to start on the pinion housing so I can go ahead and get it finished up and throw them back in the differential and out of my way. So I started throwing my pinion together and realized that I had a bearing and race that wasn't the right size. And it doesn't fit because I ordered a kit for a 98 and up 14 volt. That's right folks, don't drink in prime. It's not the end of the world. So far, the only differences I've found are the inner pinion bearing and race are too big and the pinion seal are too big. So I'll just have to order those and wait on parts. But in the meantime, I can install the Yukon Grizzly Locker and put the carrier and ring gear together and go ahead and slap that in the housing. You can wait right here until the pinion parts get here. I've already installed our pinion support bearing. Snug fit. You wanna make sure you get your carrier put back together properly. There's index marks. There's an arrow there and an arrow there. So I will just flip over like that and that'll index it properly. Just like such. You know how the internet tells you not to reuse ring gear bolts and not to install the ring on the carrier with the bolts? In all seriousness though, after I got all the ring gear bolts installed and started, I just bit the ring gear down onto the carrier with a rubber mallet. Obviously it was inverted. 120 foot pounds on these. So you wanna make sure the bolts and the holes are clean. Put the red Loctite on them that comes with the install kit. I run them down all crisscross with this little joker. 
Then I'll hit them on low with this joker and get them down to 100 foot pounds. We'll put this in the press, put some pressure on it so it won't spin, then we'll torque them all to 120 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern. We can put the bearings on. I promise y'all I just torqued those. That's why I'm out of breath. It said 120 foot pounds and I just decided to do like 60 foot pounds twice because it's math. It's the same thing, right? But seriously, 120 foot pounds, take the bolt out of your grizzly locker once you got everything put together. Otherwise you'll have a little trouble getting your axle shafts in once you get it all put together. All right, we're out of parts. We got the bearings on the carrier and the carrier set in the housing. Can't go any farther until we get the other pinion bearings in. And I got the one race that fit put into our pinion housing. And that's where we're at. So I'm going down to the Gulf to fish for about a week and uh, we can thrash when we get back. Great. All right, I got our pinion housing put together. Uh, new bearing seals, crush washer and pinion nut. Tons of red Loctite on the pinion nut. And also, if you're gonna build a 14 bolt, well, you're probably gonna have a hydraulic press anyway, but I crushed the pinion crush sleeve most of the way with the 20 ton hydraulic press. And then I ran it down the rest of the way with a uh, 50 cal rattle gun. Got about 30 pounds of preload on the pinion bearing. Right where we need to be. Mostly in spec. All right. We've got a pinion installed. We've got a seventh hour backlash, so that's good. Uh, i got a mediocre pattern on my 321 gear set. Yukon Grizzly Locker's installed. I'm going to pour a gallon of the cheapest oil I could buy in there and use a lube locker gasket. It's like a $20 gasket. It's obviously a lot more than silicone, but when I go to drain the oil a couple hundred miles, I don't have to clean up the gasket or the cover. I can just take it off, put it back on. It's reusable. It's well worth the money. Safety Crocs. Getting close. I've got fresh wheel cylinders, brake shoes, new hardware, rear wheel bearing seal, and the other side's already done. Put together. I'm going to throw that side together, get our brake line back on there, paint everything up, and then throw it back under the truck tomorrow morning. I might even be able to sleep before I go on power tour. That'd be cool. And it's time to put the axle back under the truck. I got it painted three different shades of black. We got a brand new center brake line, new vent hose. And I had to do a little work on the drive shaft. I had to go ahead and replace this rear U-joint. It was slightly loose and very dry. I was able to rebuild that one with a grease gun, so it'll be fine. Probably. So we finally solved the mystery of the origins of this service truck. This box has been locked ever since I had the truck. I drilled out the lock to get it open. I've emptied the box out now, but full of plumbing supplies. There's a whole box full of copper. Can you swap copper directly for meth or do you have to turn it into money first? I don't know. Other plumbing stuff, there was some piping in there I threw away, but really cool to actually know for certain that it was a plumber's truck. And I pulled most of the dividers out already. But uh, carpet lined, we're going to clean that up and uh, take it out. But that would explain why the rest of the service body is in such good condition. Probably had carpet lining just like this. A few good finds though. Pocketbook of plumbing repair and the modern metric system. Both of those are copyright 1976. And this sweet package of rubber flat washers for a garden hose. I wonder what she's doing these days. But most importantly, color matched gas cap for the side over here it's got the chrome one on there right now but i think i'll put that one back on probably just needs a fresh gasket well we got the drop spindles installed and the truck's finally pointed downhill a little bit but now my caster camber toe and all that jazz is messed up i got so much toe out i don't even want to drive it to the alignment shop so i'm gonna jack it up and pull the toe in a little bit and then maybe it won't be plowing asphalt while I go down the road. I'm gonna take care of that before I put my new shoes on there. Don't wanna mess them up. All right, I got the alignment good enough. It's got a little bit of a pull to the passenger side still. It's probably a camber thing that I'm not gonna worry about right now. I'll let the pros take care of it after power tour, but I got it close enough that it's not gonna hurt the tires or anything. 
That's what really matters. And that brings me to my next point. New wheels and tires. Yes. And Detroit still hooked us up with some 20 inch D-Town smoothies. And the 20 inch wheels is really what took it from looking like a standard service truck to an actual hot rod. And the factory dog dishes fit on these wheels so it keeps that classic look. And I put the vintage Igloo water cooler on here to help store cold drinks and ice. Well, let's move on to the mechanical stuff. The stuff that actually helps you get through power to her. I got fresh brake calipers and pads and soft lines on the front. And there's fresh brake shoes, cylinders, hardware, and a soft line on the back. One of the biggest changes on the truck was swapping from a 373 rear gear to a 321 gear. We also installed a Grizzly locker from Yukon while we were at it. And now everybody's favorite part, blower motor. It's actually a whole lot of bark and not a lot of bite. This is the factory engine that came with the truck. I tore it down, re-ringed it with a $93 rebuild kit from Summit. I threw a moderate comp cam in there and threw a blower on top. Optimistically, it makes 400 horsepower at the crank, which is, it's not impressive to talk about. And honestly, it's really not that impressive to drive, but it does sound good. I think we're probably gonna be upgrading this before the next power tour. But honestly, I think the most important part of a vehicle for power tour is the cooling system. You are going to sit in traffic on power tour. There's no getting around it. I don't care how good you are or what time you leave, you're gonna sit in traffic on the roads and you're gonna sit in traffic trying to get into the venue. Mishimoto helped us out with this gigantic aluminum radiator and we also have dual electric fans on this unit. So those are the big ticket items. Engine rebuild, trans rebuild, cooling system, brakes, wheels, tires, gears, lockers. All right, it's hot rod power tour day and I, I think I'm ready. I got her slicked up. Uh, I'm only three hours late. It's about 40 minutes from the house. I got to stop and get fuel, some cold snacks and groceries. So I'll get there about noon. That's good enough. Let's get to it. Stopped at the BP because it's, it's green and it matches the truck. I wonder how many MPG we're going to get. I'm thinking about eight. I think I found a line. Interestingly enough, I've already seen two broken down hot rods in the last hundred yards. It's gonna be a good week.